So we're in the process of putting batteries into the bay. Those things are about a hundred, well, they're over a hundred pounds a piece. I seem to remember them saying 120 a piece. I don't really know whether that's the case or not, but they're over a hundred anyways, and there's 12 of them, so. That's the battery, or the, yeah, the battery box I built for them. Uh, should have taken some video before I put it in there, but oh well. It's uh, an angle frame and then uh, clad in plywood, so. And I got a uh, lid for it uh, as well. Anyways, if I'm still alive after doing this, we'll be doing good. Well, hello, I'm back again. That there is the box that has the battery bank in it. I uh, built that, and again, I forgot to uh, film any of construction of it, but um, anyway, so I uh, made it, built it out of a uh, two-inch angle, and then uh, skinned it with plywood, I got plywood on the inside for the batteries to sit on, and then that uh, cover... Um, is uh, kind of diagonal there so I can just take that off and easy access to the batteries to get them in and out and uh, if I need to and also to check the water so um, yeah I haven't wired up the inverter yet um, I got to mount the uh, transfer switches against that back bulkhead there and uh, kind of where that big black cable is that's the uh, shore power cable so I'll Take that out of the box and mount that through, you know, into the uh, run that through the uh, transfer switches and um, uh, and then connect the inverter to it. So, but I haven't got to that yet. So, right now I'm installing air conditioner number three. So, anyways, it's a little bit of a quick update, and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, so as you saw previously, I got the battery bank mounted. Um, uh, yesterday I got the inverter mounted and the battery bank is just the other side of that bulkhead that stainless bulkhead there that the inverter is mounted on so I'm going to wire it today and I'm also going to um, wire up all the, the transfer switches so um, hang on a second and I'll go around the other side okay so I'm in the bay with the uh, batteries, battery bank here, and here's where I've got my two automatic transfer switches mounted. One will be for the generator, and the other one for the inverter. So, for those of you that don't really know how these things work, the line or the shore power cord, which is right there and right now goes into my breaker panel, will go to the uh, line in terminals here and then come out of the load terminals here and go to the line in. I was having a hard time focusing. Uh, the line in on this one, and then the load one here will go to the back to the breaker panel, and then the generator terminals here will the generator will get connected to that, and on this one, the inverter will get connected to here. <coughs> These have a 30 second delay. So when you fire your generator up, it'll run, it uh, the generator runs for 30 seconds or so uh, before it transfers, gives the generator a chance to stabilize and and everything. Um, this has a defeat switch on it, so because this is going to be for the inverter, you can shut that off if you want it to transfer instantly. So, and the reason I'm doing this with two 
external transfer switches that do the inverter does have a, a uh, transfer switch in it but it's not rated for 50 amps I think it's only 30 uh, it is 240 volt but it's only about 30 amps so uh, you can't run full power through the inverter so uh, by, by mounting one of these and uh, just running the inverter into it then um, uh, then you can use your full 50 amps um, the you know if you have uh, a smaller like if you're not running 50 50 amps or whatever you could use the, the transfer switch that's in it um, but uh, you know if something happened and it shorted out or you know something happened somewhere down the road and you put uh, you know it's gonna your your 50 amp breaker is going to trip so if that thing is only rated for 30 amps it's still going to cook it the, the transfer switch that's in it so so that's the way I like to do it I did the same thing on my other bus on the MC5 it's worked, worked really well um, the transfer switch on the inverter does still work it basically what it does is it your incoming power uh, all, all it does is run the uh, battery charger just feeds power to the battery charger and then it's you know it switches at the same time this switches it switches as well and uh, goes to invert so uh, you know this that transfer switch is still used it just doesn't transfer the or just doesn't feed the load to the, actually to the coach all it does is feed power to the to the uh, to the transfer switch here anyways I hope that was that's uh, makes sense I have a tendency to ram ramble so <laughs> anyways um, and the reason I'm doing uh, so the generator shore power this one here first is the line in as long as it sees uh, voltage then the batteries on the inverter will charge so that it sees uh, uh, you know, it thinks it's um, it's on shore power or whatever. So if you ran it, you know, the other way, well, the generator wouldn't charge the battery. So the reason I'm doing it this way is so either shore power or the generator will will charge the batteries. And if there's no power in this one at all, then this one will switch to uh, in the inverter and power the coach from the inverter so hopefully that all makes sense um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and wire it up here and then I'll take another video of this once I'm done all right so I got this all wired up now um, so I'll just run through this again quickly this is the shore power in and this is the load this, this, these terminals here that don't have anything on them, that will be where the generator will uh, connect once I get the generator installed. But the load out is this line here, comes up to here, and it goes to these terminals here. Then I also have the inverter lines so these these lines here feed power to the inverter which runs the battery charger while it has uh, shore power it'll also have you know it'll also feed uh, power to these terminals here but the uh, it won't go anywhere because the uh, the uh, transfer switch will be transferred to shore power or generator um, <clears throat> if I lose power in these these terminals which are the uh, which will be shore and generator then the transfer switch in the inverter will will, uh, will switch and it'll go to invert and it'll power power these terminals as well as the relay in, in here will will trip as well and it'll power the uh, you know send power to the to the coach through the uh, through these terminals or these lines here which are the load to the breaker panel so hopefully that makes sense this one has um, 
the time delay set on it for the generator. This one, the time delay is, is uh, um, disabled, so it'll switch instantly as soon as, uh, as soon as it loses power at the shore power uh, connection here, and it'll uh, it'll switch instantly. So these things switch in, I think the specs said 19 milliseconds. The uh, inverter is 12 milliseconds. I have uh, the same setup in my other bus, and uh, uh, you know, power is uninterrupted. Uh, you can have digital clocks or you know any all that kind of stuff running and uh, you don't lose any any information you don't have to reset anything um, so it's really nice that way uh, you know this is going to be an all-electric coach so there's going to be electric clocks on the on the the, uh, the cooktop and the microwave and you know all that stuff so it's just a pain in the neck when you lose power and you have to go and reset everything um, so anyways that's why I do it and uh, like I say, the other the other uh, bus, I did the same, exactly the same thing, and it worked out really well. So, anyways, now I just have to put uh, to wire up the battery bank to the inverter. That's the last uh, task on for this this setup. All right, so I got this all installed, hooked up, and working. running the inverter now just testing connections at the battery bank for heat or anything like that everything's all staying nice and cool out it's running all three air conditioners which I'm pretty happy with not that you can do it for a particularly long period of time but uh, you know but it does have the capacity to do it and uh, I just checked, it's pulling 225 amps out of the battery right at the moment, making 4,500 watts. So I'll go up inside here in a second. So, all three air conditioners are running. That one. That one. front here so once I get the uh, buses charging system connected to the inverter the battery bank I'll be able to run one maybe two air conditioners while I'm traveling down the road on the other bus, the one the uh, inverter will run one uh, one air conditioner while, tra while I'm traveling, um, just because of the capacity of the uh, inverter. Alternator makes plenty of power, um, but I this one here will run two if we needed to. This one's going to be ducted up forward, and I'll have a couple of ducts. You know, right up in here, basically blowing down on the driver and passenger's compartment here. So, anyways, be happy with that. Go shut it off before the batteries melt. Just down the bay here now. The uh, crown side is uh, stone cold. The uh, positive side there's a little bit of heat there it's a little bit warm um, you know maybe 10 15 degrees above ambient something like that um, nothing major but there's a little bit of heat there uh, I just wanted to see if it um, what kind of heat it'll uh, produce pulling a fair amount of amperage so seems to be fine okay so this system all seems to be working good the batteries are up into float mode now so it's uh, all seems to be working just fine uh, we uh, had a couple of rainstorms after over the last couple days and um, I uh, ended up with a few leaks here and there 
some of them in the uh, original uh, riveting up on the roof um, some uh, a couple around the windows he's uh, <coughs> so I went today and I went and um, sealed around the top edge of the windows so we're not supposed to get any rain for another two days but um, I'll see how how uh, many of the leaks I got um, there's uh, a couple I'll, I'll do uh, tomorrow I'll seal up as well there for some reason it has a an antenna uh, mount I guess you'd call it in the uh, in the roof and uh, well that was from from its greyhound days and uh, so that's leaking a little bit uh, there's a few rivets back just behind that original marker light which I haven't taken out yet uh, there's a few rivets they're back there that are that are weeping um, so it's actually a good thing that I ended up you know moving it because my original plan was to well it was in the shop there spray foam the interior and and do you know do the interior well those leaky rivets would have and around the windows oh you know all that kind of stuff would have been harder to find when they you know if the insulation was all done already uh the the rivets up there you know maybe they'll they'll seal up or they would seal up if um you know when i coat the the roof uh but uh yeah i don't want to take a chance on it i'll just figure out which ones they are and um and replace them not a big deal there's only like a half a dozen of them or something so not a big deal then the same thing with that uh seat or that uh antenna mount i'll just pull that out and, and put a patch over that that spot um <coughs> my slide out seals i had a little bit of a the driver's side one doesn't leak at all. Passenger side one here, um, I had a leak on it, and I can't figure out whether it's I don't whether it's the seal. I don't think it's the seal because I. It's, anyways, I haven't really tracked it down where this where that leak's coming from yet. So I'll I'll uh, have to investigate that a little bit more once the uh, you know once it starts raining, and I can kind of track everything back. Uh, the drive, like I say, the driver's side doesn't leak at all. The passenger side here, uh, I got a, it's a pretty good leak uh, down the down the front of it there, on the inside. And I haven't tracked down exactly where it's coming from, but it's good that, uh, you, know, you know, like I say, it's good that I've got some. Um, uh, there's no insulation in there because it's a lot easier to fix and everything. So, anyways, coming along. This will probably be the last video I do um, of the bus construction for a while. I'll uh, post this up and then and then uh, I'll try and do some video of uh, a trip up there, up the Coquihalla Pass and and uh, all that. Um, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> I don't really have any gear for you know mounting a camera and all that kind of fun stuff so i'll do what i can but uh anyways we'll uh now once it gets up to Kelowna, it's gonna have to go into storage for for a while winter anyways and um uh so until i get up some place to to work on it again um next spring so uh, maybe i'll find something over the winter but it'll be too cold up there to be working on it anyways so anyhow this is probably the last construction video that i'll do for for a little bit it'll be a week or so before I start or before I take it up to uh, before we take it up to uh, uh, up to, to Kelowna so anyways that's it for now